Grounding systems are important for the safe function of electrical power systems. They ensure the reliable operation of electronic devices like short circuit indicators, protection relays, and communication devices. In case of a ground fault in the electrical power system, high currents can flow via the grounding system into the soil, inducing a ground voltage that can be hazardous to people and equipment. The magnitude of this ground or earth potential rise is determined by the fault current and the impedance of the grounding system to reference earth, which is called ground impedance or earth impedance. This potential rise leads to different step and touch voltages. Their amplitudes depend on the distance to the grounding system and the properties of the soil. These voltages can cause harmful or even lethal currents in the body. Applicable medium and high voltage standards like the IEEE 8081 or the European standard 50522 therefore define the maximum permissible step and touch voltages. Touch voltages are in general even more important than step voltages as the resulting current will flow via the heart. At newly constructed substations, initial ground impedance measurements are performed to validate the technical and normative requirements. For the commissioning, it is important to measure the ground impedance of the local grounding system separately. Therefore, all connections to other grounding systems, like cable screens or ground wires, must be temporarily removed for the measurement. Using Rogowski coils as a current sensor, modern test sets allow you to measure the current distribution between the local grounding system and other connected grounding systems, allowing the grounding system under test to remain connected. To measure the ground impedance, a test current is injected via a current probe at a sufficient distance to the grounding system under test. The current injection point must be far enough away so that it is outside the zone of influence. A distance of at least five times the diameter of the grounding system is recommended. This also matches the required minimum distances in the different standards. Some test sets allow you to use a de-energized underground cable instead of the current probe to inject the test current. Additional safety equipment with high current surge arresters allows the technician to perform injections in a safe manner. This injection method can be an interesting option for large substations, or if the substation is located in a densely developed area, as it allows you to inject the test current outside the influence zone more easily. The remote substation at the other end of the de-energized underground cable will be used instead of the current probe to inject the test current into the soil. A voltage probe is used to measure the ground potential rise induced by the injected test current. The measured voltage will rise with the distance of the grounding system. From a certain distance, the voltage will remain almost constant and the influence of the grounding system can be neglected. The ratio between this voltage and the injected test current results in the ground impedance of the grounding system under test. The applicable standards recommend values for the required distance. At the correct distance, one measurement point would be sufficient, but it's advisable to measure at different distances to be sure that you're outside of the influence zone. This helps to find deviations caused by transferred potentials or insufficient distance to the current probe. Modern test sets can directly display the measurement results and visualize it graphically. If the maximum expected fault current is known, the ground potential rise can also be displayed directly. It is always advisable to measure the step and touch voltages at exposed locations near the substation, like fences, walkways, street lights, or playgrounds. Due to transferred potentials or the lack of proper grounding, touch voltages are often higher than those in close proximity to the substation. In some regions, these measurements are required by the applicable standards. Mobile handheld devices allow you to measure and record such step and touch voltages easily. 
They can also be connected to tablet computers for directly documenting the results, including GPS data. The measurements will be automatically assessed according to the applicable standards. This saves a lot of time and helps to fulfill the increasing demand for documentation. Depending on the standard used, either a ground rod or a small metal plate is used as an earth electrode for the voltage measurement. If all measured step and touch voltages are within the allowable range, additional evidence is provided that the measured grounding system can be considered safe. Periodic measurements should be performed to ensure that the grounding grid is still in proper condition as it deteriorates over time depending on the corrosiveness of the local soil. The time intervals between measurements depend on the applicable standards. Five years are common in many countries. Measurements are also required in case of newly built or changed metallic constructions in the proximity of the station like buildings with grounding systems, traffic signs, street lighting, or fences. Although ground faults are rare, the associated fault currents can pose a serious threat to people and equipment. However, with regular testing, you can ensure the safe operation of your grounding system.